I was in the corporate world and the women I worked with, I noticed over time that there was a great pay discrepancy and they didn't ask for more money. So that was really the biggest part was me realizing that the women I worked with, only 3% of them ever asked for more money, whether it was an interview or whether it was a performance review, anything like that versus 100% of men who did. Welcome to the It Gets Better From Here podcast with Cheryl Marquez, where we help divorced women rediscover their true self, reclaim their power, and rebuild a life even better than before. If you're looking to navigate career transitions and max out your fullest potential, this episode is for you. This week, we are joined by Sharon Hayward. She is a women's career coach, and she has dedicated her career to empowering women thrive in the workplace. Without further ado, Sharon, welcome to It Gets Better From Here podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Cheryl. I'm so excited to be here too. Thank you. And I just want for you to explain to the audience how you got to be where you are today, women's career coach. Like, What was your path like? My path to get to be a women's career coach was basically working with women for more than a decade. So I was in the corporate world and the women I worked with, I noticed over time that there was a great pay discrepancy and they didn't ask for more money. So that was really the biggest part was me realizing that the women I worked with, only 3% of them ever asked for more money, whether it was an interview or whether it was a performance review, anything like that versus 100% of men who did. And it really got me thinking, why does this happen? What is happening in women's heads and in social conditioning and the way that we're brought up? And it was all ages. It's not, it's not just certain generations. It's every generation I've worked with. And so that was the first thing meeting with a woman who was looking for another job. This was prior to COVID and with remote work and everything because it was closer to her daughter's school. And she told me that they offered her $3,000 more money. And I said, $3,000, which isn't even a lot really. And for some reason I was just prompted to ask her, do you think that you're worth $3,000 more? And I knew she was, and she, I, but she didn't know. And she just said, I don't know. And I said, oh my gosh, you are worth so much more than 3,000. If you leave here, go back. And you tell them that 3000 isn't enough. And I think she did go back and she negotiated for more. But that was really just seeing somebody who was so talented and so skilled and ambitious did not even know, could not even affirm that she was worth $3,000 more. It broke my heart. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is, Sharon? Um, Do you think that has to do with women and their self-worth? Or why do you think that is? Uh, That's an interesting question because I think it has somewhat to do with women and their self-worth, definitely, because we do have a social, another social conditioning, another social aspect of where we feel our worth is our finances. You know, if we make less, we feel like we're worth less and that we bring that much less value. But I think the bigger part of it is that women have been brought up as young girls to say, to say thank you, use your manners, don't make a fuss, don't ask for more, and don't don't embarrass me, you know? Those women take that into the workplace because what else would we do? That's an old lesson, but it doesn't serve us. So it doesn't serve us in relationships, in relationships, which as you know, and then it also doesn't serve us at work because as soon as somebody gives us a job offer or somebody gives us our 3% or our whatever percent raise at work and we say, oh, thanks. Even if deep inside we're like, oh, I was really hoping to get more because you know inflation or I need to get a new car or whatever. Well, okay, well, thank you. And it's just so sad, it's heartbreaking. So that's really it, being aware of those lessons and then starting to unravel them and step by step. And thank you so much for the work that you're doing to, you know, raise awareness, to empower women for to ask for more, because 
we do suppress ourselves and we do, you know, play it very small because of conditioning or whatever it is that's going on in our heads. And in fact, I was talking to a friend of mine. He's been with his company for over a decade. And recently he um, got a performance review and he only got a two and a half percent raise. And so he was very upset and he took it all the way to the top. You know, and so, like you said, men will ask 100% of the time for more. Now, can we say women will have the same conviction to know that their value and their worth, you know, deserves to be heard by not just their upper management, but I mean, we're talking about like the, you know, the person completely in charge, like the big, big, big boss. So. Mm -hmm. I, and so that's why I'm so grateful that you have come here to, you know, spread your knowledge and your wisdom with our audience, because especially my community of divorced women and single moms, my wow. gosh, with that transition and Sharon, you understand what that journey is like, you know? So what about like for women who are in the workplace and they're navigating career transitions, how can they overcome obstacles if and when they're striving for that professional career? First of all, I would say that it's very important to keep your private life your private life. And even if you are tempted to come in and say, you know, this is what's going on and my ex is, you know, like a whatever, fill in the blank, you know, um, jerk to say, whatever. And to really get into the whole drama of it, and it doesn't belong, it can have effects that as a getting divorced woman or divorced or single woman, you wouldn't even imagine, but your managers, your people around you could really be making judgments on that and thinking, oh, I think they're going through so much, they're not going to be able to do a good job, or I'm not going to look at them for this promotion or keep an eye on them because I don't think they're going to make it because of all this stuff. So that's the first one. And then I think it's really important to keep an eye on what you want to do in the future. So you're going through this transition and look at, say, in, when I'm me 12 months from now, what do I want my life to look like? And then sit down with that and think, okay, that's my vision. And then what I'm doing right now, what do I need to do to get there? And it kind of helps you take a step back out of your current, like the emotional trauma and all of that. And the just not knowing what's going to happen and the pressures, it helps you take a step back the same way that you know that 12 months ago, whatever was going on in your life, you're that person in the future right now. So you have a future self 12 months from now who's going to look back and say, oh, hey, yay, Sharon, you made it through, or Cheryl, you made it through because you did these things. So that's, um, that's really the second point I would make. And then the third point, honestly, is choose good behaviors. Mm -hmm. Don't get so caught up and think, oh, I'm just so... I, I need a drink or one cigarette isn't going to hurt or, oh, look at that guy or you know, whatever. Just don't do it. Think about where you want to be in 12 months. And it's so easy to make those decisions that aren't going to serve you. I have been there and there's nothing worse than regret that you can't go back and undo, even if it's just staying out too late and drinking too much or being t tired at work. So and Those I are the can, three things I would say for sure. Thank you, Sharon. And I cannot um, agree more on all of those points. And just the last point that you made, it's, and you know, if you even go out with your coworkers and you, you think that the clock stops because you're not at work, it's what you say after and, you know, how loose or you let yourself go because you're not in that work environment that's keeping you structure, structured. And then there's also the the alcohol that we all know, like <laughs> alcohol is too much, is never a good thing, especially when it comes to alcohol. So I've seen for myself, I have 25 years background in corporate America and I have seen people 
you know, make those mistakes like you're saying and be obviously mortified and humiliated going back to work. And gosh, I I could not even imagine what that would feel like for them to have to live in, you know, what, I mean, you could be yourself here. You could say, you know, we're, I'm explicit, like this show is uncensored. And so, you know, you cannot shit where you eat. Right, right. That's just the, the truth of it. And so, yeah, I think that is such a real, those are great points that you made. And also the other one also um, in the beginning that you said about just, basically, you know, oversharing, even if it's, you know, anything, it could be about your divorce, it could be about something personal, but just be so careful, because you might think that that person who is your work bestie, or what have you, is going to be there for you. And, but you just never know. It's just so it's just so key to have in your mind that this is where I work. This is where I earn a living. And do I want to, you know, really cross those lines there? Like what you were saying. So right. yeah, Sharon, thank you. I'm sure you've seen so much also with what we're talking about. And that's why you're sharing these things. <laughs> you seen it, done it. Could you I mean, sometimes you learn from the, the stupidest things that you do and the thing about a work family, so-called work family, is that they want you to feel like it's family, right? And you could have that work bestie, but if somebody causes you grief in your personal life, you can walk away. You can just say, hey, we're not a good fit to be friends anymore. You could block their number. You could do anything like that. You cannot do that at work. And somebody could really cause problems for you. That's such a good point. Uh, you know, you can't necessarily break up with them at work. So you have to be careful. That is such this. So that's so good. Mm. So um, Sharon, many women in our audience, they, they may feel stuck because of their situation. And of course, you know, definitely uncertain times. Speaking of career paths, what advice do you have for the ones that are seeking to like, you know, reignite their passion in the workplace, even as challenging as going through a divorce or recovering from one? Definitely. So when a person who is going through this tra traumatic time, a woman who's you know, either getting divorced or becomes a single mom or whatever, and it, I think it's useful advice for really any woman in the workplace, is to know what you want. So sometimes we feel stuck because we're in a situation that it, we don't even want to get out of bed and go to work because it's either boring or it's unfulfilling or it's with a company that doesn't respect our values. And we just feel this uneasiness, but we don't really think about what's causing it. And we might even attribute it to what's going on in the rest of our lives. We might think, well, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm feeling depressed or I'm feeling sad, which are valid, but it could be, you know, you, you blame or you attribute it to your current situation and it could actually be the bigger picture. So you're feeling stuck. And so what I usually advise is that you pull out your resume, not because you want to get another job necessarily, but you pull out your resume and you make sure it's all up to date and then you go through it and you go through it with an eye of what did I like in that job? What did I like about that employer? What do I want to do next? And then it's kind of like when we talk about that 12 month future self, just say, where do I want to be? And you might look around and say, it's not here because I'm making a list of everything that's important to me in a job and nothing is even tracking. You know, it's like, nope, nope, nope. So you're feeling stuck for a reason. So once you figure out what you want and then figure out, okay, when I look at my resume, what will my resume look like when I am in that job that really lights me up on fire, that really makes me happy, that dream job? Oh, okay. So then what do I need to do now to get there and start filling in those gaps? If you need to learn a new skill, or if you already have all those skills, they're in the wrong place, you go out and find another job. I just want to jump in here real quick to talk about something super near and dear to my heart. When I was going through my divorce, I didn't just feel alone. 
I spent so much time, money, and I made a ton of mistakes just to try to figure out how I was going to heal and move my life forward. Even with my amazing family and friends, I just couldn't find anyone who truly understood what I was going through as a single mom, as a highly ambitious, driven and focused divorced woman. If you're feeling this way too, I totally get it, which is exactly why I created the Phoenix Rising Divorce Community. This is an exclusive private online community that is away from social media and is specifically designed for high-performing divorced women who want to connect, to heal, to grow together, all while having the tools and resources to truly take their power back once and for all. If you're ready to stop wasting time, money, resources, and you're tired of doing it alone, and you're finally ready to move your life forward and heal once and for all, this is the community for you. Check the description for all the information. Thank you. That's that's wonderful. I'm so glad you point pointed those things out. I, I've i also seen and I've known people who are so miserable in their current job. I've given them the advice that, you know what, you need to brush up that resume, keep it and then just, you know, like even talk to a recruiter. But I just, it just blows my mind why they would just, it's probably comfort and familiarity, you think? That's why they don't want to make that leap of looking for something else? Or what are the things that you've seen, Sharon, why they say that? Yeah, I think you are exactly right. There's so much of it that's comfort and familiarity. And when you're going through a divorce or you're struggling, or is it just a real, real challenge being a single parent, if your kids are young or your kids are teens or, you know, whatever they are. And you think, oh gosh, not one more thing. You know, I'll just, you know, I'll just put up with this, but we put up with so much and maybe we were putting up with so much before the situation, before we got divorced or whatever, and putting yourself in a new position where you can really feel relief in going into work and say, this makes me happy and I'm bringing my best value. So I would say that it is that comfort, but go ahead and at least, at least check it out. And anything that you don't want, I tell people, take it off your resume. If there's something that you did in the past that you're just like, oh, well, I did that job, but I didn't like this part of it. I didn't like these tasks or I didn't like this responsibility. Take it right off because you don't want anyone to associate that with you. And people think kind of people get bogged down thinking like, oh, my resume has to say everything. Nope, it doesn't. Your resume is just a story. A resume is a picture of really where you want to go. Somebody looks at your resume and says, oh, okay, this is them. And then you can explain, and this is where I want to go based on these things. And they're not boxing themselves in. They're not locking themselves into what they don't want. So they'll get more of in the next job that's supposed to be brand new experience. Right, Sharon? That's exactly, exactly. That's such good advice. Wow, that's wonderful. And so when they do go into that interview, let's say, for example, what would you, you know, like what kind of, because self-confidence plays a crucial part in even, you know, where you're at currently at your job. And then if you are interviewing, especially for divorced women, single moms who have been, like we said, been playing it small, how can, um, or how does the role of self-confidence play into their career advancement? And how can they, How can they harness that confidence so that they can achieve their professional goals? Self-confidence is pretty much the number one driver in getting ahead, you know, getting ahead in your career, whether it's getting a promotion or getting more money or going back to what I said about women not asking for more money. Only 3% of the women I ever worked with. And statistically, if you if you do some research, the percentage is quite low. So if you're a person who is looking to get another job, so for whatever reason, you've kind of identified your dream job, you found some places to interview, you know what it is that you want, and you have your list. I think it's so important to make a list of what you want. And you also want to feel the value that you bring. 
because you don't want to be that person who it's kind of like they say, oh, we'll pay you. And you'll say, I'll take it like, well, but it has to be the right pay. It has to be the right job. And we don't want to be still subject and kind of being held hostage by those old lessons. So we're going to unravel that and pull out your resume. Your resume is such a valuable tool. So you're going to look at all the things you've ever done, all the accomplishments, highlight the accomplishments, your skills, your education, your experience. Think about what people have told you. I love working with you because whatever. And so you've got all that and you really start embracing that worth. And then you look at, now let's say you're ready for an interview and you've looked at your job description that they're asking and maybe some other job descriptions as well. You go through your resume and you highlight everything that fits that job description. And then you go through and you highlight anything that's relevant. So maybe it doesn't quite fit with what they're asking, but you've done something that's very similar or those skills are transferable. And you start realizing when you walk in that door that you are the 100% perfect fit for that job. And you know what you want to get paid. You know why. And then you sit down and basically explain that once you go through the interview. So make sure that when you're in that interview that you're taking notes. And taking notes is always going to be your, one of your best friends. You know, you don't have to try and remember everything. And you can go through and summarize at the end. Ask for the job. And that's one more thing. So, so few people ever literally ask for the job because they think, well, you know, I want the job. That's why I'm here interviewing. But when I was working with people and it came down to two different candidates, let's say we had two people who were basically qualified and I liked them both. And one of them has said, I'm the best fit for this job because of this X, Y, Z. And I would really like this job. I really want you to hire me. I think, oh, okay. Well, okay, let's do it. So as crazy as that sounds, yeah. That's really, um, unheard well, I should, well, yeah, for me, it is unheard of because, you know, you go in, like you said, and, you know, you are under the assumption that they know you're there for the job, but they don't ask for it. I think that also leaves them with the planting of the seed, like, my gosh, she really wants this job. She told me. Exactly. So you said, you know, very similar um, candidates, the one that is going to most likely get the attention, lasting impression would be the one that asked for it because they want it that much. Mm -hmm. And, and it's know, just, yeah, it's just smart. Yeah. It is. That's such great insight and tip, Sharon. And, you know, for all of our audience, viewers, listeners who is tuning in, there is so much gold here that you know you've just dropped when it comes to like empowering women in their career and also there's just a lot of things too that um they can use in their own life like personal life like you can even flip the switch and say you know i should not um be around these people or i should not be drinking when i know i'm going to let's say take my kids the next day and have a parent teacher conference or i don't know something just you know these tips like you just shared with us you can apply in your own personal life as well and like the wins right the resume mm -hmm. That could mm -hmm. be translated into just even journaling your wins and feeling good about yourself and the la the other things that you've done. It could be so small, but the point is, is just reminding yourself that you are capable, you are valuable, and that you can do whatever it is that you wish to do, which is at this point in time in your life, that'll be to, you know, reinvent yourself, rebuild your life navigate your children so that they are not broken, but thriving post-divorce. Mm -hmm. And Sharon, that's just so, you've given us so much value and I, I'm so grateful. And before we wrap up, I always love to ask my guests just two questions because I'm so into metaphysics, we're gonna go into a time machine. And while in you're in that time machine, if you could go back in time, what is the one thing you would do differently? <laughs> That's such an interesting question because 
the, where I am right now, I can look back at everything in my life and think, oh, that happened for a reason. I learned this. I got to this path. But if I could go back and make a change, I one big reason that I left a company that I was with was because I had expected my boss at the time to have me promoted to a higher position. And he had always been there for me. And I know that he knew that I should have been, except that he had been so busy with things and his wife just had a baby and just whatever. He didn't do it. He didn't get it in on time. And then later when I gave my notice and then our office president said, he feels so bad because he knew that he really dropped the ball. And, and, and I thought, well, okay, that's good. Looking back, I dropped the ball. I should have said, I want to make sure that I'm giving you everything you need, that if there's a timeline or what can I do, this needs to happen because this is what I deserve. That's, that's one thing I definitely would have done. That's really, that's really nice that you, you know, say, said that and so honest and thank you for generously sharing because there might be somebody listening that's in that same position and, you know, they're just waiting and putting all their eggs in that basket, which is, you know, their, their um, supervisor boss or what have you. And we never know what happens behind closed doors, what people are going through. So we have right. to advocate for ourselves is what I'm hearing you say. We have to be our own advocate. Yep. And it's don't blame different. anybody else. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Blame doesn't do anybody any good. It, it never does. It's a waste of energy. Right. Oh, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> that's great. Thank you, Sharon. That's so that's great because I do. I mean, you know, yes, we are exactly where we're supposed to be because of our experiences. And I, I know that almost 99.9% .9 would not change one thing. But mm -hmm. the but the ones that do share that if they could have, you know, gone back and done it differently, like what you just said right now, that's so key. It could help so many people. So thank you for that. Right. Yeah. And while you're in that time machine, uh -huh. um, <laughs> we're go back to um, your younger self, if you could tell your younger self one thing, what piece of advice would you give? Hmm. Let me think about that. Um, you know, honestly, I was always chasing for something to feel good about myself, you know, to feel like I belonged or to feel like I was where I was supposed to be or that somebody thought I was pretty or wanted to date me or whatever. So I was always chasing that. And the more I chased it, I feel like the farther it got away and then the worse I felt. So it's that really, it's that crazy cycle, you know, and I don't know if we just have to go through that and I learned, or if I could just say that thing to myself, just say, don't chase what you feel like you don't have, just find it in yourself. And, you know, maybe I would have spent less, um, less time just second guessing myself and feeling sad and, you know, feeling lonely. That's really key to, to what you're saying, especially for our audience, because I remember going through my divorce journey and chasing what I want my life to be like, what chasing that, you know, that partner that I was longing for, because I'm trying to duplicate that feeling of belonging, of being, you know, with being married, being with somebody. And only until, like you had said, you know, I just basically I stayed present and I just focused on what I had going on. It just alleviated so much burden. I freed myself. So that's right. lightly touching on what you were saying, though, Sharon. Mm -hmm. And that's just it's amazing. This whole this 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 whole episode has been so invaluable, especially because during that transition for our community, but we don't know if they're going through, you know, a divorce um, or I mean, not a divorce, but like changes in their career because of the divorce. And you've given them so much information on what not to do at the beginning of this. So you guys, please catch, you know, like rewind and listen to the what not to do, because I wish 
I had that. I wish I knew. I remember reading the same piece of paper for an hour and nothing was sinking in. So I can't imagine what that must have looked like for, you know, people around me that are so used to me being a certain way, being on point. And then I'm dropping the ball. So, you know, it's just if you were to take anything from this episode with Sharon, please go back and listen to the the you know the tips that she's been giving you, especially when it comes to protecting your your space, your peace, and just being careful with who you surround yourself with because that could really destroy your existing work situation. And if you happen to have a good job, <laughs> you you know like just one bad decision, like she was saying, could change the course of your work life. And if your life's already in chaos, personal life, I mean, at least have something that's stable, you know, that you can go back to, which is which is work. So Sharon, thank you so much for everything that you have given us here and sharing so generously, like personally, and also, you know, with your, with your wisdom, with your career, um, and your gifts. So where can we find you? Where can people get more of, um, you know, like what you're working on and um, how we can stay connected with you? Oh, sure. Well, first of all, it's been a pleasure. And I'm just so happy that I had this opportunity, having gone through single mom myself, divorced mom myself, and working on my career you know it's something that's so common to us and people can find me at uh, so i always say sharon rose sharon rose you know it's my name dot com and then it's my name sharon rose hayward on instagram and on linkedin so uh, really that's the best place to do it i have a weekly winning at work newsletter that goes out every tuesday morning and that you can sign up at my website. So that's really good. I do have a membership for women and it's called winning at work and the members are winners. And I'm going to be sharing on a deeper level with the winners and focusing on all things career. I always say work life balance begins at work. And that's what we'll be doing. I love that. I love it. So everyone, Sharon's information is going to be in the show notes. Please check it out and please connect with her and all of her socials. And I read her newsletter weekly. It's super good. So make sure you catch that as well. Thank you so much, Sharon. I appreciate you, my friend. And we're definitely going to have you back on because this is not enough time. There's so much more there. I agree. I agree. Yeah. That's it for this week's episode. I truly hope you learned a lot of invaluable tips and wisdom from Sharon. I just want you to remember that within any career transition or even um, challenge, there is an opportunity. As always, no matter where you are at in your journey, no matter how old you are, it gets better from here. If you like what you heard here today, be sure to hit that subscribe button. That way you never miss an episode. And don't forget to follow me on social media at Instagram, CherylMarquez.com. Thank you.